Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar Doing Business in Peru, Canada-Peru Free Trade Agreement, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, and Business Opportunities for British Columbian Companies. My name is Ganna Drost. I'm manager at the Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch with the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery, and Innovation. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking today from the territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Esquimalt and Sandhese First Nations, traditional land keepers of the land where I live, work, and play. This is the shortened version of the webinar that was delivered on February 16, 2022. The recording of that webinar was unfortunately corrupted. So this video was recorded from scratch and does not feature neither welcoming remarks by the ambassador, nor the testimonial from the CEC mining systems, nor the Q&A portion of the webinar. In this video, you will listen to the presentations by Anouk Bergeron La Liberté, Commercial Counselor and Senior Trade Commissioner with the Embassy of Canada in Peru, and Roberto Requejo, Associate Regional Manager, Andean Region with Expert Development Canada. This webinar, Doing Business in Peru, is part of a series of webinars on free trade agreements that Canada has in South America and market opportunities in those markets. So there will be three presentations in this recording. We will start with a quick overview uh, of Canada's bilateral free trade agreement with Peru and the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. And then we will move on to the presentation on expert opportunities and key sectors in the proven market by Anouk. Both presentations on trade agreements and market opportunities will last approximately 15, 20 minutes each. And then we will move to the presentation on support to Canadian exporters in Peru, available through Canada's expert credit agency. And this presentation will be delivered by Roberto. Now let's start with the introduction to Canada's free trade agreements with Peru. And for those of you who were not able to join the webinar on Chile, I'll say a few words about the branch I work at. The Trade Policy and Negotiations branch represents BC interests in both domestic and international free trade agreement negotiations, as well as in trade disputes that affect BC. And we also run consultations with BC businesses and stakeholders to better understand your interests and communicate them to the federal government who leads the international trade negotiations. And of course, our branch uh, also does FTA outreach sessions like this webinar to ensure that the information of these free trade agreements that Canada concludes is widely known. So here is a quick overview of my presentation. I'll briefly present the role of our ministry then I'll talk about Canada's trade agreements and Canada-Peru FTA, the CPTPP agreement and key opportunities for goods and services. I will also dive into some practical steps on how to use the free trade agreements. The BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation aims to make life more affordable for British Columbians and build an economic recovery where no one is left behind. And there are many ways to foster this economic recovery and growth. And one way is to encourage you, BC businesses, to diversify your expert markets and leverage the opportunities that are found in free trade agreements. And we want you to succeed in your expert journey. And this is why we focus on providing you support and having your back when you do your business outside of province domestically uh, or internationally. And we assist you to be aware and leverage opportunities through, through a variety of programs like Expert Navigator, for example, that provides free support and ongoing guidance to help your business grow outside of BC. And we also have BC in market representative uh, offices that are based in a number of markets globally. So Canada has a first mover advantage and to this day has secured 14 free trade agreements that cover 49 countries along with two domestic trade agreements. And those agreements give you your businesses access to nearly 90% of export markets or about 1.5 billion potential consumers worldwide. And this map shows you where in the world Canada currently has those free trade agreements. The countries that have implemented free trade agreements with Canada are marked in light blue. 
And some of the well-known uh, free trade agreements are USMA, Canada's agreement with the US and Mexico, the CPTPP, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, and a few others. In green are marked countries where Canada is in negotiation or in exploratory talk. And in dark blue are countries where Canada has concluded but not yet ratified the free trade agreements. So there is Chile in pink. It has in force and not yet ratified free trade agreements. So some free trade agreements overlap, and this is the case of Canada's trade agreements with Peru. Canada has a bilateral agreement with Peru, and Peru also has recently ratified the CPTPP agreement um, last September, to be more specific, September 2021. The good news for you is that you can choose under which FTA you can claim preferential terms of trade. And in addition, a few years ago, to the discussion started around a free trade agreement between Canada and Pacific Alliance, to which Peru is also party to. So potentially at some point in the future, you'll need to decide between three FTAs with Peru under which you want to claim the preferential treatment. So also a question, what free trade agreements do? Well, the free trade agreements, they facilitate trade and eliminate trade barriers between nations. And you might also wonder how do they do this? So if you know anything about FTAs, you probably know that most visible aspects are goods market access, which means tariff reductions and tariff eliminations. But FTAs, they also do much more than this, and some FTAs cover only goods, while others include services, investment, government procurement, etc. And also, free trade agreements of today are changing and they are becoming more and more comprehensive and uh, modern to cover things like SMEs, e-commerce and, and inclusive trade. Now, uh, let's take a deeper dive into the Canada-Peru Free Trade Agreement or the CPFTA. Let's start with some facts. The CPFTA entered into force in August uh, 2001, and it became Canada's fifth FTA in South America. The agreement is a comprehensive one, and in addition to covering reduction and elimination of tariffs, it covers trade in services, government procurement, investment, e-commerce, financial services, and so on. And today, Canada is an important trading partner for Peru. It is a sole supplier of oats to Peru, for example, and Canada also supplies 80% of Peru's wheat imports and 50% of Peru's dry beans imports and 60% of Peru's imports of explosives. So it's a pretty, pretty good ranking for, for Canada in Peru. BC ranks number six among Canadian provinces exporting to Peru, and uh, it's more than doubled exports to Peru in 2019. So there was a slight uh, setback in exports during the pandemic in 2020 and 2021. But uh, due to our geographic location, our maritime route to Peruvian market is also one of the shortest compared to, to other provinces. And the key BC exports to Peru include medical apparatus for X-rays, machinery and parts destined for uh, mining industry, paper, laboratory reagents, cameras and uh, cereals. So now let's take a quick look at the CPTPP agreement. So the CPTPP is one of Canada's most recently implemented free trade agreements and it entered into force at the end of 2018 for the majority of its members. So currently, the CPTPP is in force for eight countries, Canada, Australia, Japan, Mexico, New Zealand, Singapore, Vietnam, and Peru. The CPTPP entered into force for Peru on September 19, 2021, and Peru caught up on, uh, or as we say, matched Canada's schedule of tariff reduction eliminations. In other words, Peru entered into year five of tariff reduction schedule in 2022, as other members who have ratified the CPTPP earlier on. And in addition to tariff reduction and elimination, there is a number of perks that go with the CPTPP entry into force for Peru. On investment, for example, the CPTPP will allow VC and Canadian companies to invest with 
greater confidence in Peru, offering protections from unfair and discriminatory treatment, for example. And there are also new commitments on the temporary entry of business people that will make it easier for Canadian and BC businesses to temporarily move high-skilled Canadian professionals and technicians to Peru. And this is just a high-level overview of some benefits. There are many more advantages that I had to curtail in the, in the interest of time. Let's now take a look at some opportunities for Canadian and BC goods in Peru. So in terms of tariff reductions, it is useful to note that Peru's most favored nations tariff tariff that applies to countries that Peru has no free trade agreement with, varies from 6 to 11 percent, depending on the product. Canada Peru FTA provides considerable advantages to uh, products made in Canada as it eliminated or phased out a number of Peruvian tariffs. And uh, through the CPTPP, Peru has further reduced or eliminated or caught up on the CPFTA tariffs. And as you can see from this slide, most of the agri-food products as well as value-added wood products became duty-free. Some products, however, were excluded and still face tariffs, for example, dairy, apparel, and some meat products. The very important point here is if you wish to take advantage of the preferential tariff treatment under Canada-Peru agreement, the CPTPP or any other free trade agreement, you need to claim the preferential treatment. And Peruvian customs authorities will not just assume that your product qualifies for 0% tariff just because it was shipped by a Canadian company from Canada. And I'll come back to that in a few, few sites. So in today's new age, FTA's benefits for trade, they go beyond effect of lower tariffs and FTA provide greater certainty and reduce perceived business risk while making doing business more transparent and more predictable. When entered into force in 2009, the CPFTA was instrumental and continues to provide Canadian exporters with a level playing field with other competitors in the proven market. For example, Peru already had an FTA with the, with the US back in uh, 2009. And later on, it also uh, signed agreements with China, European Union, Singapore, South Korea, and a number of South American countries. So both bilateral agreement and the CPTPP provide access to government procurement for Canadian companies in Peru. And under both agreements, Canada and Peru agreed to a negative list approach, which means that the agreement covers procurement of all goods and services unless specified otherwise. The list of entities that are covered under the CPFTA and the CPTPP is different. And under the CPFTA, covered entities are central governments, um, entities, universities, and stent enterprises in Peru. Well, under the CPTPP, the entities covered are central and regional government entities, as well as some other agencies. So in the table on this slide, you can see the approximate thresholds under both agreements. And the thresholds give you an idea about the value the procurement contract has to be above so that it can be bid on by a Canadian company and still be covered by the free trade agreement. And a caveat on the thresholds that you can see on this slide is that they are rounded and presented in Canadian dollars for, for your convenience. We often hear from you whether the FTA benefits are automatic if you export to a country that Canada has an agreement with. The short answer is no, you have to claim the benefits of preferential treatment. So I'll just provide a glimpse into a few key steps for you to keep in mind when you do business in countries covered by Canada's FTAs. First, you'd want to check a tariff preference in a select FTA market. And you can do it through Canada's Tariff Finder website using a harmonized system code or a keyword for your product. This tool is user-friendly and helps you to see how your goods will be treated in Canada's FTA markets tariff-wise. Next step is the rules of origin compliance. Rules of origin are the rules around the amount of domestic content in a good. And rules of origin can be complicated and they are also product specific and agreement specific. So for example, for Peru, they can be different for your product depending on whether you claim your product as originating under the Canada-Peru 
free trade agreement or the CPTPP free trade agreement. If you are in doubt, we can help and take a look at your product in more details. So once you are done with the first two steps, you will need to fill in a certificate of origin. And the information needed for these certificates can vary by agreement. Under the CPTPP, for example, there is no set format for the certificate of origin. And if you want to be sure how, your, uh, how another country's customs administration will treat your product upon arrival, you can also request an advanced ruling on tariff or on origin information. And advanced rulings are often one of the most effective trade facilitation tools in Canada's FTAs, and they help expedite customs clearance and provide more certainty about how the custom administration of the recipient country will treat your product at the border even before you ship it. So I will close by saying that we continue to support people and businesses in the recovery from the pandemic by assisting you with leveraging the opportunities in Canada's free trade agreements. And if this is something that you are considering, be it in South America, Asia, Europe, or other markets, please contact us and uh, we'll make sure that you get the information and assistance you need. Now I'll flip it to Anouk bergeron Liberté, Commercial Counselor and Senior Trade Commissioner with the Embassy of Canada in Peru per portion of the presentation. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again to the BC Ministry of Jobs, uh, Economic Recovery and Innovation, and in particular to Ghana and Rods for developing this initiative. Um, I think we all agree that uh, we need to have more of these sessions uh, so companies can be exposed to new markets. Uh, this presentation is an introduction to Peru as an interesting uh, diversification market. In my presentation today, I will be covering in general what we see as business opportunities and some of the key sectors we work on more actively. This doesn't mean uh, we don't see opportunities in other sectors, and we would encourage you to contact us afterwards so we can discuss your individual cases. I will as well present on what the Trade Commissioner um, is, uh, the Trade Commissioner Service is about. And I am here this morning with part of the trade team of the Embassy uh, of Canada in Peru, FG Gare Trade Commissioner responsible for the ag sector and everything related to trade policy market access, and Alexandra Laverdure, Trade Commissioner responsible for the mining sector and uh, response, uh, RBC responsible uh, business uh, conduct. Um, we have three other trade commissioners who could not be with us this morning. Their contact information will be available at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, just to provide additional information that was not necessarily presented by Ghana on the bilateral commercial relationship, I'll be quick on that one, um, but wanted to give you a few key information. So as you could see on the slide, Peru is an important partner for Canada. Um, I show really in this slide some interesting figures on bilateral trade between the, the two countries. Uh, in 2022, weight trade was uh, 4.5 billion uh, Canadian dollars. You see here the Canadian exports to Peru, um, the Canadian imports from Peru as well, and, uh, and uh, Canadian investment in, in Peru, uh, which are important with 15 uh, billion Canadian dollars and, and mostly in, in mining. Um, we haven't uh, uh, gotten the, the last figures for or the full figures for, for 2021, but we've seen uh, up to October that the two-way trade was um, was kind of um, having an increased um, by the, an increase by approximately 20%. So that's that's uh, positive and that's uh, that's good to see. Um, also, a couple of points here. Peru is Canada's second most important trading partner in the South American region. So it's not nothing. So it's after Brazil, but it's followed by Chile and Colombia. So they're always close by Chile, Colombia, Peru. And Peru is the third most important destination for Canadian investment in the region. So it is um, it is an important partner in the region. Now I would like to speak briefly about the Trade Commissioner Service and how we can support Canadian companies and their business development projects. So the TCS is here to help make the exporting journey more efficient. Um, however, questions you need to ask yourself in planning to enter new international markets are uh, the following, and I will name them in a few minutes, and the presentation today serves this purpose, right? To give you initial information on the potential of Peru as, as a new market to pursue. But some of the questions you should ask yourself, is your company ready? How do you reduce and manage the risks and uncertainties? What market should you pursue? How do you find the right uh, contacts? 
and this is what we offer. So our expertise is really, and uh, our expertise and support is really to help Canadian companies grow around the world. We've been doing that for the last uh, 25 uh, years. So we help companies grow globally through export sales, uh, foreign investment, and other types of international uh, commercial activity. For example, one uh, additional um, thing that we might be doing is to uh, help you develop uh, science and technology partnerships, just to name uh, one example. So we offer um, a network of trade commissioners in Canada and abroad. Uh, we will see a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, funding, so can export, uh, we'll get into uh, a bit more details. And business support, so we organize, we organize activities, some of them there, um, in, in Peru, we're uh, more uh, actively uh, organizing trade missions and events and, and bringing also, you know, buyers uh, to Canada or to other trade um, trade events that we might uh, we might uh, see a big uh, Canadian uh, delegation uh, in third uh, country, for example, in, in the U.S. Um, we often have like uh, trade shows and I'll talk about that in a few uh, in a few minutes. Our network, um, so ex what exactly do trade commissioners do to help produce risks and save time? So we provide uh, key market insights, as you can see on, on this slide, um, and practical business advice. And this is a little bit of what we're, co we're covering today uh, briefly. We also help open the door to new business opportunities uh, globally. Uh, we identify qualified uh, business contacts based on your needs and we resolve um, complex business problems in, 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 in the, that you might face in foreign markets. Um, in order to do this, it's better we, we talk to you individually eventually, um, and I think this is key here. Today we cover, as I mentioned previously, general information, but it will be important for you to get in touch with us, either at your regional office in, in, in uh, the BC province uh, or us in Lima directly. So we go over your company and tailor uh, our support to your uh, specific context. TCS funding, I mentioned can export. There are um, different programs, but can export SMEs uh, would be the one uh, that uh, could apply to you, uh, more generally speaking. It is uh, the largest of the four uh, programs we have. Um, the program focuses on export marketing activities of existing products and services in foreign markets. Um, it, it could support exploratory activities, um, um, as well as activities that contribute toward a long-term strategy to go international. So you can have a multi-year project, uh, you can have like a, uh, a single application, you can build on previous application, etc. The important part is you need to apply through um, uh, the system online and uh, make sure you have like uh, you, you present a strategy. So the program the program helps reduce risk by sharing up to 50% of, of eligible uh, costs. Um, and you can include like uh, different markets. Uh, we are now accepting applications uh, since January 2022 um, and, and projects could start uh, in April um, 2022, the 1st of April. So, um, but you can submit applications all year round. It was just uh, suspended for, for a few months because of, of COVID, but now it's, it's fully uh, open. Uh, business opportunities in Peru. So I want to spend a few minutes to give you a quick overview of a few key sectors where we see opportunities in Peru. You might, again, not see specific information on your particular sector, and it is normal. Uh, we, we could not cover uh, all sectors in, in this presentation, but we uh, are available to connect afterwards to review the potential of, um, uh, of your company to be successful in Peru with our team of uh, trade commissioners. So um, just a bit of on the current perspective. So um, at the beginning of the, the webinar, um, the ambassador referred to our long-term relationship with Peru in his opening remarks. Um, we're working on solid uh, foundations that have um, enabled us to establish a positive relationship over time. Um, as you were able to appreciate, Canada has been really active in Peru in recent years, and we continue to be. Um, I need to mention that prior to the COVID-19 crisis, Peru had been one of the best economic performers in Latin America over the last 20 years. Uh, Peru's economic growth was of 4.8% average between 2000 and 2019. So this growth was driven mainly by favorable terms of trade and a solid macroeconomic uh, policy. 
The change in the national government uh, recently in July 2021 has led to increased uh, political uncertainty. Um, we face constant changes in the government. Um, it's the fourth cabinet in uh, seven months now um, so it makes a little bit our interventions uh, a little bit more difficult and it can cause delays in sectors where uh, the government uh, is actively uh, involved um, we see also some repercussions on the investment climate with local and international investors uh, although they remain optimistic right and uh, but they're they're currently monitoring carefully the situation before making decisions on major uh, investment. So it'll be very important for Canadian companies to also monitor this closely uh, and depending on your sector of activities, we might see business opportunities impacted by this. It could be positive, it could be negative. Um, however, what we see is that Peru's economic recovery appears to be one of the strongest in the South American region. Um, the COVID-19 crisis pushed uh, Peruvian GDP into contraction in 2020 for the first time in over a decade. Um, it fell by um, close to 12% in 2020. But in 2021, GDP was back to 13% and is expected to go back to a more normal level in 2022 with an expected 3%. Um, so I'll stop there for this current perspective and get to uh, some of the um, key sectors that we cover where we see business opportunities. So um, in terms of the mining sector, so, so we've presented the, this information in, in, in key in four uh, sections. So the key facts about the mining sector is that it's one of the most important sectors for Peru. Uh, you can see this by, uh, you know, the GDP, the percentage of, of Peru's GDP that is that is actually coming from mining the, ex, the total exports, 50, 60 percent of Peru's total exports is mining. Um, a lot of that great uh, project potential, Im immense pot potential for, for more to come, a, a very important uh, Canadian presence uh, in, in the, the mining portfolio. In terms of opportunities, we see mining 4.0, right? The uh, um, artificial intelligence, automation, digitalization, cybersecurity, all of this, uh, and we're strong in this in Canada. Uh, in terms of environmental protection, so everything related to environment, uh, water, wastewater, um, in particular for, for tailings, and energy efficiency as well. So some of the challenges that, uh, that uh, the mining sector face uh, in the water, for sure, um, always like uh, criticized on, the, on the, the usage of, of water. Social conflict, uh, this, is, this is common here. Um, there's a legacy, I mean, it's been, it's been here for, for forever, um, but it, it tends to, uh, to be challenging and we have to keep that in mind. Um, the mine safety, which create, I think, um, uh, opportunities and um, the well distribution. So the fact that the mining sector uh, benefit uh, benefits some uh, some regions and 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 benefit uh, benefits the population. Some of the key events that we've uh, we've um, uh, included here. One is happening at the end of April. It's a local one in Lima. There's always PDAC with a huge delegation uh, of Peruvian uh, companies and, and authorities. It's going to be in June this uh, this year. And uh, uh, in Peru Min, which is the one uh, happening in in in, uh, in Peru uh, in September, the the one of the most important uh, ones as well. Um, in terms of water and wastewater sector, I talked uh, a little bit about it uh, related to mining for sure. Uh, some of the key facts, though, that uh, you need to be aware of, Peru being uh, considered one of the most water stressed countries in the world. Um, it's uh, Lima is uh, the world's second largest city located in the desert. Um, large disparity in access to potable water and sanitation services. Um, and it is a priority for the government, but we need to keep in mind that uh, based on what I mentioned on the on the, uh, the local uh, government situation and what's happening politically in Peru, uh, private sector is also like a very important part of this sector. So um, to to focus on. Um, 
in terms of opportunities, we see, uh, you know, uh, companies, local companies looking for new water management technologies and services that are not offered in the in the market or not available in the market. Uh, everything related to uh, technology, software, sensors and chemicals, integrate and integ take integral technical advice. Um, uh, desalination, uh, equipment, etc. So again, as I mentioned, opportunities in the public sector, uh, but also in the private sector, so keep that in mind. Um, challenges, um, local support and after sales service is important, quality and price are important factors, and uh, often you need to certify your technologies uh, to be able to uh, sell them in the market. Some of the key events, so mining shows we mentioned, are always um, including a component related to the environment of water and wastewater in particular, um, or treatment of water. Water treatment, I should say. Uh, Canada at WEFTEC, this is one of the examples I mentioned in a third country. So in the US, where we have like a huge Canadian uh, company delegation and where we have also Peruvian companies going. So it's easy to um, to meet there. And Expo Agua, uh, which is one that has been uh, growing. Uh, it's a local uh, trade show and it's been growing in terms of uh, Canadian uh, participation. Defense and aerospace sector, um, uh, some of the key facts, so we've seen like a, there's a long lasting relationship in defense between Canada and Peru. Uh, it is a priority for Peru to improve uh, military and emergency response capacity. It is where uh, we see a lot of opportunities in emergency preparedness, response and disaster relief. Uh, we have a lot of, of those technologies in Canada and uh, defense uh, is really active in humanitarian assistance. So this is what they need uh, the most to be uh, well equipped with. So we see opportunities in aerial firefighting equipment, surveillance ra radars, um, submarine maintenance sonars, also um, air ambulance and uh, MRO um, related to the military market. The challenge is that um, they don't necessarily know a lot about Canadian capabilities. We're, we're actually working on that, but it is always, they're always surprised to see what we have in Canada. Uh, there's a lot of, it's it's a bit of a, a bureaucratic process uh, related to work working with the government and on projects. Um, and some of the key events, and there's one happening in April, at the beginning of April in, at, uh, in Chile, uh, uh, FIDAI, where we, we have a Canadian delegation and we bring Peruvian uh, buyers as well, and CANSEC in Canada uh, in June, among other uh, things. The ag sector is also where we see um, uh, an interesting uh, or interesting opportunities because it's, it is also like a very important sector for Peru. Um, it's growing. We have a lot of Canadian uh, exporters active in that sector. It is uh, an important part of uh, our um, trade bilateral relationship. Um, but it is a price sensitive market, uh, so there's a lot of uh, impact when uh, when the situation is uh, what it is in in the world at the moment. It is affected, and and the price uh, the prices are are up, and uh, but it it doesn't mean that there's uh, no opportunities, and there's not. We see that there's not a lot of a, pre a presence in in prepared food, so we could see opportunities in that. So commodities, it's a it's a it's a fact. Uh, the demand is uh, stable and uh, uh, will be maintained. Prepared products, as I mentioned, uh, we see more and more uh, available, but there's there's space for that. Um, and uh, in the sort of health conscious, more uh, product type, uh, we see an increase in just natural stores and people are more and more um, uh, sensitive or sen sensitized to this uh, to this year. Some of the challenges is uh, they like their food and food, so um, uh, so that's uh, that's a very uh, important point to keep in in mind. The labeling requirement uh, can be a little bit uh, complex to maneuver, um, and there's some ongoing market access discussions on, on some of the key products. So that's that's something that we need to to keep in mind. Some of the key events there there is Exportimentaria, which is here, and uh, Cial as well. Um, sometimes Montreal, in Montreal, Toronto. I think this year is in is in Montreal. So those are kind of um, interesting 
events that you can uh, uh, think of participating to connect with Peruvian uh, delegations. Um, how to do business in Peru? So just a few key points here to consider when you start thinking about doing business in Peru. So um, you, uh, the local presence, so working with partners um, is important. Uh, so you, you complement a little bit the offer and you kind of bring a local, uh, someone who can sort of work with you closely. Spanish is essential. Um, again, through lo your local partner, you might have that, uh, but you might also want to consider having like Sp Spanish um, uh, speaker person within your, your team to, to help with with those uh, those things. Uh, the, the, the importance of building a relationship, this is very common in Latin America, the importance of building the relationship before getting into a business relationship. Um, you have to be ready to invest in time, in uh, in money um, with your, your, your team as well. Um, be knowledgeable of local business practices and market characteristics. I think it is important in all markets you decide to develop to uh, understand how it works here. Quality and price are important deciding factors. And then uh, the last one is to leverage trade commissioner service. We're here to help you understand and navigate uh, this environment. So connect with us. There's a huge trade ecosystem in Canada. You see all the different partners, uh, federal, provincial, territor territorial, even the municipalities are involved in, in, in trade, uh, in uh, international trade nowadays, um, and you have all kinds of different other uh, trade-related organizations. So leverage your this network. And with us, the regional offices, as I mentioned previously, there's an office in British Columbia in Yukon. Um, it would be sort of your first stop, I would think. Um, and then obviously you talk to us, we're, we're in Lima, we have uh, the team of uh, five trade commissioners. This is here on the slide. Please contact us, follow us on uh, LinkedIn, on uh, on Twitter, on, on Facebook. Uh, the trade commissioner service is, uh, is available there. And then some additional information I wanted to mention, the CanExport uh, website to have access to this um, uh, the support and then some of the key step-by-step uh, -step guide to exporting to prepare uh, carefully your your or to sort of work on a project for for exporting and to prepare yourself carefully for international markets so I'll stop there I was really happy to uh, to be able to present to you today and thank you very much again please don't hesitate to be in touch with us we would be pleased to help you with uh, with your uh, project in Peru Thank you, Anouk, for this comprehensive presentation on Trade Commissioner Service Office in Peru, the services that you provide to Canadian companies and for highlighting some of the sectors and opportunities of interest to, to BC companies and a handful tips on business etiquette. I'm now pleased to hand it over to Roberto from EDC for his presentation on Canada's Expert Credit Agency. And Roberto will walk us through what Expert Development Canada is, what support it offers to companies like you, and some success stories of Canadian companies in the proven market using EDC services. Roberto, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Roberto Raquejo. I'm the Associate Regional Manager for the Andean Region at Export Development Canada in Peru. And first of all, I would like to thank the government of British Columbia for the opportunity to be able to be here today and tell you a little bit more about what EDC is doing in Peru and how we can help you grow internationally. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about Export Development Canada. So we are Canada's support credit agency. And for over 75 years, we've been helping Canadian companies navigate, manage, and take on risks, enabling them to grow and succeed in global markets. Our purpose is to make Canada and the world better through trade. So for this reason, our mission is that we use our unique trade knowledge and financial solutions to develop trade opportunities between Canada and other countries. And with this, we enhance Canada's competitiveness in the international marketplace. We like to call ourselves the international risk experts because we're here to help you mitigate risk. Our unique knowledge of international trade and global buyers enable us to take on and manage significant levels of risk. To tell you a little bit more about our solutions, 
We're here and we equip Canadian companies' businesses with the tools they need to grow their business with confidence. And with this, we can help you through financing. As we can help Canadian companies get access to capital, with our insurance, we offer protections that lower the risk for Canadian companies doing business beyond our borders. One of our uh, main products here is the accounts receivables insurance that makes sure that you get paid when exporting to a different country. Also, the knowledge is extremely important. We provide expertise that enables our customers to make informed decisions and learn more about international markets. This is something extremely important because sometimes we don't know how to do business in a particular region. So the knowledge part is key in order to be successful uh, when doing international businesses. So I would encourage you to visit edc.ca, visit our uh, Trade Insights uh, website, and there you can find a lot of pieces of knowledge uh, regarding different regions. And finally, with connections. We connect Canadian companies and international buyers to help them both grow. One of our main products here, some programs, is the Business Connections programs, which basically uh, helps, uh, basically how this works is that we finance an international buyer with the purpose that they can use that money to buy from Canada. And through the tenor of the financing, we understand the buyer's needs and we find Canadian companies that can satisfy those needs. So we do the connections and we expect to uh, create a contract with in the near future. So this is a little bit of how it works in terms of connections and, and, and something that we currently are doing in, in Peru. In terms of where you can finance in Canada, you can see us that we have offices in Montreal from coast to coast. We, are, we have offices in Montreal, we have offices in like Ville Saint Laurent, we're in Ottawa, we're in Toronto, but you can also finance in Vancouver. We have an office in Vancouver in British Columbia that is ready to help you. So please feel free to contact them. They're a great team that is able to um, talk to you and see what solution could fit best for you and according to your needs. Also, we have 20 offices around the world. You can find us in all, pretty much all around the world in Asia, Africa, Europe, and the Americas. My office here covers the Andean region where we cover Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, also Central America, and the Caribbean. To tell you a little bit more about what we're doing in Peru, uh, Peru, despite the recent political instability, Peru has robust macroeconomic institutions that are strongly favored business-friendly policies. The country offers opportunities in many sectors. Significant investments in infrastructure and technology are specifically essential for Peru to maintain growth and improve social welfare. The Canada-Peru Free Trade Agreement is further, has further strengthened a well-established and growing trade and investment relationship in the recent years. So this has enabled Canada to become, to become a top foreign investor in the mining sector. Export Development Canada has a representation office in Lima, where I'm one of the representatives. And to tell you a little bit more what we have done in terms of financial highlights, in 2021, we generated a business volume of $964 million. Just in financing, we finance uh, 256 million and we have searched 264 uh, customers. In terms of the sectors, uh, the extractive sector is extremely important, but regarding the business volume, it, it's also good to highlight the infrastructure and environmental is, is, is very big, um, followed by the light manufacturing sector. As you can see, uh, 2020, uh, we didn't do much financing. It was mostly insurance. But in 2021, we're seeing the economy recovery. We're seeing more financial opportunities. And we expect 2022 to even be bigger than in terms of business volume uh, for later this year. In terms of the customer set by sector, you, we can see that most of them come from the light manufacturing sector, followed by infrastructure and environment and also very important in the extractive and resources sectors. In Peru, we work with the most uh, prestigious international buyers. So Cerro Verde is one of our clients. We finance their expansion project and we've been working with them. They're uh, one of the most important copper 
um, exporters and producers. We also have Minsur. Also, uh, they have a copper mine. They just uh, we finance their uh, their project called Mina Justa, which is one of the newest mines in uh, Peru. And we also work with Grupo Energia de Bogota, where we finance uh, the company Contugas. Basically, what we how we work with them is that we uh, meet with them regularly to understand their needs. And once we find opportunities for them, we introduce them to Canadian exporters that could satisfy those needs to generate trade between uh, Canada and Peru. So the idea is that with all of those uh, connections that we generate, they can start buying from Canada more and more, and we can also help them satisfy their unique needs. One of the things that I like to highlight is that our knowledge and network are here for you. What we have uh, realized at EDC is that the knowledge part is very important. Uh, through our offices, we have a lot of professionals that can provide a lot of business tips. They can provide their expertise. For this reason, we have created new products. And one of them is called our social media series where we have videos about all around the world in uh, how to do businesses in the region, in the market trends. So please make sure you're following us in all of our social media platforms. We have also generated uh, different business guides, not only for Peru, but also for Latin America, for Africa, and for other countries that you can find online at edc.ca. So please, I would encourage you to create an account on my edc.ca and so that you can have access to all of this information. And finally, we also have a podcast that has nine episodes about trends in trade. And you can find that on Spotify, or also on my edc.ca. Uh, we have useful information there also about how to do business internationally. So all of these products are made for Canadian exporters. So please uh, have a look at them. You'll be having a copy of these presentations where you will have the links to those. So make sure you have a look at them. And finally, uh, this is our content information. In case you require any additional information, please feel free to contact us. and We're here to help you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Roberto, for this great overview. I'm sure we'll be getting lots of follow-up questions regarding financing and insurance products you provide to companies doing business internationally. And this presentation concludes this webinar, Doing Business in Peru. If you have any questions to any of the panelists, please get in touch with us using the contact details that we shared in our slides. And on behalf of BC government and our panelists, thank you for listening.